Our respiratory system allows for gas exchange between the environment and our body, specifically putting oxygen into our blood and pulling carbon dioxide out of it. When the respiratory system can no longer do this, this is known as respiratory failure. Let's take a deeper look at how this can happen. So the primary function of our respiratory system is for gas exchange. This is a process where oxygen is moved from the environment down our respiratory tract into our lungs, specifically to our alveolus, where oxygen is then put into the bloodstream to ensure a constant supply of oxygen to our body's tissues. Now, at the same time, at the alveolus, CO2 is pulled out of the blood and then is moved out of the lungs where we exhale it into the environment. This is to prevent a buildup of CO2 in our body. When this process of gas exchange doesn't work effectively, respiratory failure ensues. There are two types of respiratory failure which we're going to look at. Firstly, type 1. Type 1 respiratory failure is also known as hypoxemic respiratory failure. In type 1 respiratory failure, this is where the respiratory system cannot adequately oxygenate the bloodstream. So what we would see is a decrease in O2 in our blood, which is known as hypoxemia. Whilst CO2 remains fine or slightly low. This can happen from a number of things. One example could be low O2 in the atmosphere, for example, at high altitude. Another cause is a diffusion issue. This is where the diffusion across the alveoli membrane and into the capillary is hampered, such as lots of fluid in the lungs. This could be caused by pneumonia. Another cause is what we call a VQ mismatch. This is where blood coming to the alveolus doesn't match the degree of ventilation in the alveolus. The second type of respiratory failure is type 2, also known as hypercapnic. In type 2 respiratory failure, this is where the respiratory system can't provide enough oxygen into the blood, but also can't remove enough carbon dioxide out of the blood. So what we would see is a decrease in O2 in the blood, hypoxemia, but we would also see an increase in CO2 in blood, which is called hypercapnia. A common cause of this is a pump failure. So this is where the respiratory system does not ventilate or move air in and out of the lungs well, therefore carbon dioxide doesn't leave the lungs and oxygen doesn't enter. This could be caused by an obstruction, so a common reason for this would be COPD, or if there is a disturbance in the way that the breathing rate is regulated or its effort, and this could be a neurological problem or a musculoskeletal problem.